Welcome to the Archer's Annual. Got our third episode here. We're talking about deer tracking today. Welcome back to the Archer's Annual. I got Roger Martin with me here today. Um, Roger is my pastor, so it's not intimidating sitting with him because he's actually my friend, good time friend. <laughs> Even though he's a little older than me, that's all right. A lot um, older. A lot older. <laughs> he just outranked me by just a little bit, but that's okay. <laughs> um, I believe you've been in construction for a long time, is that right? Yeah, I spent most of my adult life in construction field somewhere. Okay, yep, that's what I thought. Now you've kind of transitioned in the last year, now you're doing uh, counseling. Is that yeah, correct? I'm helping out in the counseling office and uh, fits well with my pastor hat that I need to wear. So <laughs> I'm enjoying that. Yeah, good, good. And you're also a longtime hunter. How many years have you been hunting? Oh, I, I was following my dad and my brother around before I could carry a gun. So as soon as I was 12 years old, it was game on. But I didn't really start hunting deer until um, my first experience was 15 years old on the home farm, sitting in the fence row in okay. the back behind the barn. <laughs> so I was 15 and um, 16, I got my first hunting license and Things were different back then. You had to make a choice. You're going to kill one deer. That's all you got, one tag. So okay. you, even in archery, you had to decide if you wanted to shoot a doe or wait for a chance for a buck. If okay. you shot a doe, you you lost your, that was your only tag. Gotcha. So you had one tag and that was yep. it. Okay. I didn't know that. So did you start archery hunting right away then? or when did uh, you I think it was uh, 18 probably when okay. I fought with my first bow. Uh, my first bow was a compound. Back in the days, I paid $69 in some sense for a brand new <laughs> compound. Wow. <laughs> Man. I can tell you a story about that bow if you want. Sure, go for it. I didn't, I didn't have anybody train me or teach me. So I was behind the barn there at the farm shooting in a hay bale. That wasn't very steady. So I had this bright idea if I propped the bottom limb of the bow on the ground, I'd get steadier. <laughs> That tells you how I started. Yeah. Because you know what kind of uh, results that, that end up with. Yeah. It didn't blow my bow apart, but it sure kicked it. Almost lost it. <laughs> almost jumped out of my hand. Wow. So <laughs> did, your, did your brothers or your dad archery hunt at all? You were the yeah. first one. Okay, so you had to yeah. figure it out for yourself pretty much. Yeah, I just had a real interest in hunting, and I was going to do as much of it as I could. Yeah. And... What brand was that bow? That was a bear. A bear? It was okay. called a black bear two. Okay. Bear, a bear archery. They're still around. Yeah. And, so. and there was no fancy rest. There was just a little plastic arm glued on the side of the riser. You laid your arrow on that plastic arm. Okay. And you shot with gloved fingers. Okay, so you didn't have any kind of release or anything. Not in was, those days. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. That's uh, that's weird to think about because it's very different. <laughs> it's different. But that's, yeah. that was, that's where we were. I remember, uh, I remember a fellow saying, if you hit a pie plate at 30 yards, you're good or something like that. Yeah. That was a, a, a basketball type size, okay. a pie plate basketball bonus. Yeah, that was your goal. That's so, yeah, the shots weren't you didn't take 45, 50 yard shots like they do nowadays, right? The consistency just wasn't there, right? And you were shooting all aluminum arrows, I'm assuming. Yeah, all aluminum arrows didn't take long to bend one <laughs> if you missed the target. That's it. <clears throat> yep, <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. Hear a little history there. Um, we can get, uh, get into dart talk. So the idea behind dart talk is, um, to throw a dart and it corresponds with a question on the dartboard. Um, so there's some incentive. If you hit the, uh, yellow bullseye there, you'll get 20 bucks. And if you hit the black bullseye, you'll get 60 bucks. Um, and in practice, he put two in the yellow bullseye. So hopefully he can't repeat that. <laughs> I, don't, I can't repeat it. I never did two things twice. <laughs> so go ahead and um, see what you got there. I just got to make sure there's a point on the end. You know, <laughs> jinx me. 19. Does that count? Yep, that counts. Right. 19. I ain't going to give you too many, too many chances. <laughs> 19. Oh, that, that, we kind of talked about that. It was what age did you start hunting? We kind of talked about that already. I'm going to give you a different. Throw another dart. I'll give you another chance. That's not, right. not, not a chance you're going to lose 50 bucks. <laughs> oh, that was close. What is that? 11, I believe. 11. All right. 11. Let's see what you got. All 
right. How do you pass time in the tree stand? How do you pass time? How do you pass time in the tree stand? <laughs> We're in the October lull right now, middle of October. How do yep. you pass time in the tree stand? Well, I haven't been there for the last two weeks. So, <laughs> but um, I'm, I'm going to give you two scenarios. Before the days of smartphones, okay. you did different things. Now I find myself playing with my phone, which I really shouldn't be doing so much. Because I've missed... I've missed a shot at more than one deer because I was playing with my phone. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, so I take my time now to sort through the phone, my f album, my photo album or something, separate pictures, put them in folders, do mm -hmm. things like that, check them on email, send a text that I didn't get done at the office that day or something. Yeah. Pray, read my Bible, study something that I'm getting ready to preach maybe. Yeah. Um, back in the day before a smartphone, I always carried a little testament along. Okay. Challenged myself to read that. Sometimes you're better at that than others. You yeah. know how that goes. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but yeah. yeah, passing time in tree stand is, is an interesting. I think we have come too far away from quiet times for ourselves. Mm -hmm. We don't know what it's like to be quiet mm -hmm. and just uh, disconnect and, and let God speak to you. Um, one of the things I always try and do in tree stand when things aren't going is to pray and say, God, I'm out here again today. Show me something interesting. So when you sit there with that perspective, uh, you you notice things. And I remember one time asking that and praying that, and before long, here comes a squirrel. Well, we all seen so many squirrels there, like a dime a dozen, but yep. this squirrel came down the mountain, went over to the stream that was running past me about 20 yards, went down the edge of the stream and, edge of the stream and drank water. Did you ever <laughs> see a, girl, a squirrel drink water? I've never seen a squirrel drink drink any water that's for sure well, that's what i seen that day and i thought wow that's interesting just but just different stuff like that yeah ducks swimming by in the creek i love watching squirrels uh hide walnuts and things <laughs> they're funny places they put them yeah and i'm like how are you ever going to find out again? <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> especially in in the woods like there's yeah. yeah i know what you mean yeah, well, that's that's good to know. That's just, interesting. Just from last year, this is a memory that's coming right now. I'm sitting in a tree saying it's late season, and I'm hearing this whirling sound. I'm like, oh, man, it's getting windy. What? In the, but this is weird. It's like, and it's suddenly I realize that somebody's flying a drone over me. <laughs> There's a development not that far away, and somebody's playing with a drone. And this thing's buzzing. I could see it. <laughs> <laughs> that thing never happened years ago yeah stuff like that hmm. there you go yeah interesting <laughs> yeah and i think i think uh definitely what you said about taking time to uh just disconnect um mm -hmm. i know I, I have a pretty busy lifestyle just take time to connect or disconnect and mm -hmm. um, engage with the lord because it's so hard um yeah. with our lifestyles we just just go 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 and actually like sit down um, for a prolonged period of time, um, yeah. for hours on end, just yeah. where they're just praying and thinking. Um, that's It's difficult, we, but it is good, definitely. Yeah, We tend to forget that God wants an intimate relationship with us. He wants to connect with our hearts. He, he put his spirit, we are spiritual beings. We have a spirit that wants to connect with a spirit, and he's offering his. Mm -hmm. That's the plan. And you can do that anywhere, anytime. Some of my best experiences in life uh, when it comes to hearing the Spirit and, and and connecting with God, my best experiences have been in the woods by far. And it's, it's just a great time because mm -hmm. you're not focused on other things. Right. And if you go into the woods and you're on your hunting trip with that perspective, uh, you can find it. Yeah. The Lord will always meet you. Yeah. Yeah. All right, we can uh, move forward. Today we're talking about tracking deer. Uh, we're going to hop into uh, Roger's experience as a, a very experienced hunter. He's going to tell us all the uh, stories today. <laughs> you don't have time. <laughs> um, so I want to I want to walk through um, the different types of vital shots. Um, so heart, lung, liver, spine, um, and also a gut shot and a shoulder shot. Um, what it looks like. Uh, how the animal reacts, what the blood looks like, mm -hmm. um, different things like that. And I want to kind of know your experience um, from animals that you've shot um, and gotten that you've known, you've known what kind of shot that you've had on them. Um, so that's kind of how we're going to go today. So let's start with a heart shot. Um, from your experience, what is a heart shot? How does that all kind of um, come together? So 
we're talking archery versus mm-hmm. yep. We're not all talking archery. about gun right yep, now. Yep, all so archery. Yep. We're talking archery. Um, a hard shot deer will probably die within your sight, or you'll hear it crash if it's thick, and you'll know it. Mm-hmm. You'll know it's close by. Um, I love opening a deer up and reviewing the shot, the angle of the shot, what it did, what it touched, mm-hmm. and that's how you learn. So you got to get really tight behind the front leg to get a heart on a whitetail with mm-hmm. an arrow. It's pretty close. I do not intentionally aim for the heart, but I have gotten a few mm-hmm. when you're off a little. <laughs> Give yourself that grace. <laughs> yep. um, the other week, the first doe I killed um, was uh, a heart shot. And it was tight behind and basically severed the main artery of the heart from mm-hmm. the lungs. Main artery of the heart connects to the lungs. And it just took it off right there. Gotcha. She died in the field. Yeah. And that's what you want. <clears throat> yeah, quick, clean. You can You can nick a heart. You can catch lung and just nick the heart, different things like that. You can you can be high. Um, but any Anything you touch in the heart there is going to be a plus. Mm-hmm. So I don't intentionally aim that tight to the shoulder. Okay. But sometimes you get it. Yeah. Um, I guess this question is going to kind of go for all of them. Um, is there certain reactions that a deer um, has, like for specifically a heart shot, like, um, as opposed to any other um, vital shots, like whether like the way it runs away or anything mm-hmm. like that, is there anything specific or not really? Nothing, nothing real specific other than if you have a, a good vital shot, and I'm talking heart and lungs, double lung and heart, mm-hmm. you usually get a really high jump and the, the back leg is kicking okay. out, bucking like a mule. Mule kick call type it. thing, yeah. yeah. You usually get that on a real good vital. Okay. And... Um, They'll most of the time take off on a mad dash. And those of you who kill deer like that, you know what that looks like. But I call it the death run. You mm-hmm. can tell. It's like they they run wide open till they run out of gas. Mm-hmm. So if you cut the <laughs> if you cut the gas line, yep. so to speak, um, you get pretty much the same reaction to heart or lung. Okay. Yeah, that's the next one we're going to get into a lung. Um, step us through a little bit um, with a, a single single lung as opposed to double lung differences there from your experience a double lung shot um, kills a deer as fast as a heart shot in my experience give or take it all depends on the size of the animal as to how much blood they have to lose mm-hmm. before they um, crash but a double lung shot is something that you usually know that you have a dead deer waiting for you yeah, okay. um, I, I listen uh, one of my go to things is listening very intently after a shot i'll sometimes cup my hand in my ears to pick up every sound that you Mm -hmm. possibly can because if you hear a sound fading away the deer's still traveling if you hear a lot of crush crashing and sticks breaking and all of a sudden it stops you know you have that expectation that the deer is at that spot that abrupt end is a good sign so you want to pay attention to the sound on the even a long shot deer that you know and you'll see that probably if it's within 20 yards or so, you'll see where you mm-hmm. impact. But the hard thing is to um, discern if you got double long or single. Depends. Right. If if a deer's out there 20 yards, you probably get double. If she's in really tight and you have a real steep shot angle, mm-hmm. a lot of times you can you can just clip one lung. Yeah. You might get one lung in liver, or you might be low or high and just clip the top or bottom of a lung. Yeah. That's hard to tell. Yeah, until you open it up, of course. But yeah, I mean, right. before but that comes, you can't really tell that. Yeah. There again, if you pay attention to the sound of the deer leaving, um, does it fade away or does it run 60, 80 yards and stop? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, a lot of times, if a deer doesn't really know what happened, they will run 40, 60, 80 yards and they'll stop and look around. Just wait, kind of stand there, yeah. assess the situation, yeah. sort of. And sometimes they'll go down right there if they're a double long shot. If there's mm-hmm. one, if there's only one long, the deer will walk away from that spot, probably. Yeah. But my experience is they will usually bed within a reasonable distance, like 150 yards. Okay. Depends on the terrain and where they feel safe, but they don't go real far until they bed. If if you have one long shot, they won't die quickly. Yeah. And um, you need to. You need to remember that you can really can't pursue. You need to kind of figure that out before you pursue it. Okay. So if you're saying if they 
So if you would shoot one with a single lung and you would see that it would go 40, 60 yards, stand there and then continue to go, yeah, that would, you would, for you, that would that indicate like a single lung shot? Or not? I mean, well, if I know tell, for but... sure where I hit that deer and I know I hit it at the right spot, my mm -hmm. angle might have been wrong or something. If it's back in the gut or the stomach, you know, that's not yeah. what you're talking about. But if, if, a deer, if a deer goes out 40, 60 yards, stops, and then walks away from that spot and disappears from sight, slowly meandering up through, mm -hmm. um, you don't have what you wanted. Right. Yeah. If you had a double lung or heart, the deer wouldn't walk it away just, from that spot. Yeah. Normally. Yeah. Okay. Okay, that's good. There's exceptions to everything. <laughs> there's some rule of thumb details that I follow. Okay. Yep. Yeah. That's good to know. Um, kind of give an idea. So when you when you get that, if you do get a single lung shot, um, is there a certain time amount of time that you wait? Um, you go out that evening or next day, or how do you typically assess those situations? Um, sometimes it depends on availability of time. Yeah. You know, it's like if I gotta leave at five thirty tomorrow morning, take a crew of guys to a job site or something. Mm -hmm. I'm committed. Right. I might wait till 10 o'clock at night and go back in there with another guy or yeah. two and then give it a, check it out. A lot of times I will, if that deer bounded off 60 yards and stopped and then walked away, I'll go to that 60 yard spot. In the meantime, I'm looking for my arrow and I'm checking for blood. When I get to that spot, I want to see what's there. Yeah. It gives you a clue. Um, if you don't, if you only get one lung, you're not going to have near the blood flow as two lungs, right? right? So you can you can sort of figure that out. Mm -hmm. Steady, continual blood, I'll keep tracking. Okay. But if you're not sure, given a couple hours is, is the best thing you can do. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's move to the liver. Um, from your experience, what does a liver shot look like? <laughs> a liver shot is when you always wish you could pull back and bring it forward about three inches <laughs> but you can't do that yep i have i've shot numerous deer that ended up in the liver it's not far from the lungs right and you can easy easy uh miss that a, a liver shot deer um, will hunch up quick like a gut shot they won't run mm -hmm. they won't blast out of there like a lung shot deer in my experience anyway yep. they haven't blasted out and run to the end of their rope you right know? but they might jump and run 30 40 yards and stop and then they just stand still and sometimes you think what's going on but they have just this, this, a little bit of a hunched up look mm -hmm. and and it, it's like it it hurts to walk or i don't think it really hurts but they mm -hmm. just know something's wrong they don't know what it is yeah. and they will slowly meander off 30 40 yards and bend down yeah i have had liver shot deer bed down in my sight I'm up in the tree in a climber, mm -hmm. and it's bedded over there, and it's not dead. And I can't get a shot at it. Yeah. So it's maybe 40, 50 yards out. <clears throat> if you get down and try to approach it, you'll spook it. Yeah. And then you probably lose it because you can't, they don't spray blood in a liver shot. Okay, yeah. A liver shot is not an organ that pumps blood. A liver isn't. Okay, yeah. It doesn't pump. So it just kind of leaks. Yeah. And so you don't get a spray. So... Mm -hmm. If I suspect a liver shot, if they're slow in leaving and they feel, and they only walk 10 steps at a time and stop, and then another 15 and stop, mm -hmm. there's a good chance you got a liver. So very, very different as compared to your, your lung or heart yeah. shots. Yep. Um, talk about the, uh, the, what the blood looks like with a liver shot compared to a lung and a heart shot. What, what, when, on your arrow, how does that blood, blood look? Yeah. Every time I think I have this figured out, something different shows up. <laughs> so lung blood, everybody talks about it's frothy and has bubbles in it. And yeah. that's true. If you get a good double lung, you can usually see that. But most of the time, you're not spending a lot of time tracking because you've got a dead deer laying within right. sight. Yeah. So you don't focus on that. A hard shot deer doesn't get uh, frothy bubbles in it necessarily. Mm -hmm. But um, it'll be a dark red. Liver is the dark gust. Okay. If there's going to be a dark red blood, in my opinion, it comes from the liver. Okay. And you'll, but unless you have both side by side, it's really hard to tell. Yeah, it's hard to tell. You can, I can make better uh, conclusions based on what I saw happen. Where did my air actually hit? How did the deer react? Okay. But, right, because yeah. if you know that your shot was front and low, you're, I mean, you're not really going to be thinking you got a liver shot anyway. Right. So, 
I see what you're saying there. Yeah. Um, let's move on to the the shots that we don't necessarily want to get. <laughs> I mean, liver sort of that way. Um, let's talk about the spine, the spine shot. Have you ever spined a deer? I have. Yep. Not intentionally. <laughs> I was going to ask on purpose or no? <laughs> no. No. And uh, shooting in tree stand, um, a deer, they can react. Mm -hmm. Whenever they whenever they go to leave, they drop. Body line drops. Yep. You yep. can hit high real quick. I, I learned have, that this I past Saturday. <laughs> you learned it? Yeah, I had a doe duck my arrow. So. I have it on camera, so hopefully I have a video here soon of oh, wow. showing that. Um, but yeah. Slow it down. Toot, yep. toot, toot. I put lines on it. You can see that it's very, very yep. evident how far they went down. But anyway, yeah, they, they can duck extremely they, well. They just react. They're not intentionally thinking I need to duck right. this air. They're just reacting to get their their leg muscles together to jump. So mm -hmm. they'll crouch down just like you would if you're going to jump over this table. You're, you're going to go down and spring up forward. Mm -hmm. That's what deer is doing instinctively. Yeah. But it happens. And when you slow it down and you miss the deer. <laughs> I cut hair off the back of a big eight-point buck a lot of years ago. Oh, yeah, I think he was like at 15 yards. Wow. That close? Yep. Wow. But he looked up and had me. Okay. And I forget hmm. if I stopped him or what, but he was like, you know, and when I released the arrow, he mm -hmm. reacted enough. All I got was hair. Man. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to cry. <laughs> so where were we? The spine shot the spine deer. shot? Yeah. Load another arrow and finish the job as quick as you can. Okay. So what happens when you hit that spine? What does it, what, what does the deer do? You, it'll just drop. If you hit a spine, a lot of times you sever the spinal cord, which take, immobilizes the back legs. Yeah. So you'll have the deer on the ground pawing with its front legs trying to gain traction and go. Yeah. Sometimes they'll squirm behind a tree and you can't get your second shot. You got to get out of the tree and do it. Yeah. Not a fun, not a fun way to, to kill a deer. It's not. It's yeah. not. That's the worst. That's the worst kind of experience for me. Yeah. Because I. Because if I have to get down to get my next shot, then I'm frantically trying to do that. And it's not mm -hmm. a safe way to exit a tree either. Yeah. So, get your wits together, put some thought into it. Do the best you can. Yeah. Okay. And there's not really any bloodshed, not much bloodshed that happens with no. that. No, um, there won't be much blood. Um, you got to put another arrow but yeah, in sure. the deer to kill it and then open it up and you'll have all the blood inside you. Just yeah. drain it. Yeah. Okay. Hey, everyone. Thanks for watching the first part of this episode. Second one should be right around the corner. And also, if you'd like to uh, have your question answered during Dark Talk, Put that down below in the comments. Thanks for watching. Catch you later.